Hello everyone. Uh, this is Mool Shankar Kothari, co-organizer of Apple Asia Abu Dhabi and Dubai Meetup Group. Thanks for joining us today. We are recording uh, this session and will be uploaded on Apple Asia YouTube channel. Uh, today we have Mr. Gigo Joseph, the Vice President of uh, Blockchain Services at Chainyard, uh, the company that has developed uh, Trust Your Supplier project is a production great blockchain network that Chenyard Chen deployed in partnership with uh, IBM. It provides a trusted digital passport for supplier to work with the buyer in the network. Thank you, Mr. Joseph, for your time. Uh, he will be sharing the experience uh, and the lessons learned in building the large consortium such as uh, Trust Your Supplier. So if you have any questions, uh, you can type in chat window or you can ask in the QA section. Uh, so thank you once again, Mr. Joseph. Uh, stage is all yours. So we can start with uh, introduction as uh, then you can start the present presentation. Okay. So yes, you can go ahead. Uh. Hi, uh, this is Satish. Uh, I'm uh, working here in Emirates Group IT in Dubai. Uh, I have been here at Dubai for uh, four years. And prior to that, I was working at uh, IBM and Accenture in India. I'm from uh, southern part of India, Tamil Nadu. So uh, I recently started uh, you know, exploring blockchain and uh, joined this meetup. So I'm happy to see you all. And uh, thank you, Jigo, for your uh, presence here. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you all. Yes. Uh, Everybody Mr. going one by one. Uh, yes, Mr. So, Siddiq. You heard? Uh, hello, I'm uh, Siddiq. I'm a software engineering student uh, and also uh, a co-founder of Elecoin Startup uh, Indonesia and work, currently working on a supply chain project to, uh, as an intern for a company called Review Indonesia as well. Thanks, Dick. Next, this is Mark. Yeah, this is Kumar Vela. I'm from uh, Chennai, India. Uh, so, you know, I'm kind of a blockchain evangelist following up the different projects in the blockchain. And, uh, you know, recently uh, you know, started uh, understanding some of the chain yards work in the supply chain area. I think this session will be a good input for me. Thank you. Mr. Kamlesh. Yeah, hi, uh, hi all. Um, uh, I'm Kamlesh, and uh, I'm VP Blockchain for Eastern Future Tech, and uh, uh, Pune Mumbai Hyperledger uh, chapter organization, and also uh, kind of co-leader of Hyperledger India chapter. And I'm just good connected to Gigo, so just want to listen him again. So join. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for joining, Mr. Keldon. Yeah, maybe if I'm not wrong, Keldon or anybody wants to introduce who has not done yet. You can introduce yourself, Mr. Uh, Gigo Joseph, and yes, you can yes. continue. So we are recording okay. the session. Awesome. So if somebody, they can find on the Hyperledger YouTube channel. Sure. Okay. So, so again, my name is Dijo Joseph. I am the vice president of uh, blockchain services for Chainyard. Uh, I've been with this company for the last two years. Uh, so currently I am based out of India. Uh, so I take care of the international business, uh, take care of the outside North America business. So um, a little bit about, so the way I, I structured this presentation is like, you know, we'll talk one slide about what is Chainyard. Then we, explain TYS solution in such a way there are slides in middle in the in between 
which uh, which explains the learning we had you know you know what we learned and how we did the solution uh, so that is a critical part uh, when we i initially you know discussed the mool shankar and he said right the, uh, you know no they don't they, you know it's, it's more important for people to understand um, you know the challenges we went through and how we address so that you know everybody else can actually um, you know learn from it and you know uh, implement it so the uh, though lessons learned is put it here actually this comes uh, uh, in everywhere everywhere in the middle uh, and last i there are some models of consortium yeah, because that is one of the major challenges of uh, uh, you know uh, putting together a blockchain is your ability to uh, put together a consortium and and all of you if you have seen it you know two weeks back this uh, uh, deloitte has come up with uh, uh, the survey right blockchain survey i find that a uh, lot of companies are moving towards uh, blockchain adoption in production networks are i think 32% of the companies they said they have a, a solution already in production so so what we see is in poc stages are out so the more people are moving to production and tba is being one of the uh, one of the successful product in production so the lessons learned will be helpful for every one of you okay so a little bit about chainyard there's only one slide i have here so chainyard is a subsidiary of a parent company called it people corporation so we are in fact uh, uh, we created this uh, service uh, business unit around 5 years back when ibm started uh, uh i the uh, blockchain journey uh, on the hyperledger so we we are a key contributor with ibm on the hyperledger platform uh, and the high fabric platform uh, so we done more than 24 projects in blockchain and a solutions for many companies we primarily services uh, you know services provider a services company uh so over the throughout the journey we created a lot of pre built components you know a lot of framework we have uh and tooling to accelerate the projects you know uh, some of our uh, major frameworks were presented to hyperledger uh global forum two years back i mean there is a good uh, presentation available on youtube if you are a techie you wanted to learn learn uh, uh, more about the uh, the technology framework that chainyard has so many solutions supply chain manufacturing this one in transportation there is few in logistics and financial services this couple in asset management and the last the trust your supplier is more on the you know procurement of a supply chain organization so uh so when we did you know the the whole uh, the whole reason this 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 trust your supplier got started was like you know when we did all these project in you know, our ceo thought about uh, why don't we have a solution by ourselves right so we had so much expertise so we Uh, debated on many ideas, uh, like you know. Then we finally shortlisted four ideas, and uh, with uh, with we are just always was using working with IBM. So we took it to the IBM, some of the team members, and discussed some of the ideas, and then we finalized uh, this trust your supplier, right? So, so this trust your supplier product is like you know. I don't know how many of you worked in the uh, worked in uh, uh, procurement division. for any companies and you know the challenges of procurement organization right it's starting from a qualification of a supplier you know start with a find a good supplier out in the market and once the supplier is found you know then you go for a validation of the supplier's data so basically what you do is you ask the supplier you know submit all these uh, hundreds of documents like your financial statements your company's uh, certifications your insurance uh, the uh, the license of this company then you start with uh, other things like the uh, all the board members you know board, all the directors information are they related to certain people uh, maybe let's say if you are in mining you know you wanted to ensure saying uh, you are adhere to certain as uh, you know a uh, standard you know so you, they ask all these things the problem is when somebody submits this the companies don't want to take the risk of you know uh, accepting that so they send it to third party for validation companies like dun and bradshaw thomson reuters or you know large uh, chartered accountants they validate all this information so once they are validated validated you know uh, they are onboarded uh, onboarded in an existing like sap has a service typing on onboarding as uh, suppliers into their network 
then once they are onboarded this life cycle starter right you know basically after six months is may is insurance may have expired uh, so after six months uh, his insurance may have expired or uh, one second uh, let me okay after six months his insurance may have expired then the company has to resubmit it right and then that life cycle manager maybe Maybe you wouldn't even know that, you know, insurance has expired. Then when there's an accident happens, you know that it has expired, right? So there's a life cycle of maintaining them. Is there. So, so if you look at that whole process, right, the, this, this is so and inefficient. I mean, it takes 30 days to three months to onboard a supplier. And this regulatory requirements keep changing. Like, you know, Dubai government may put us a new requirement and everybody should follow. And that, that, that data needs to be collected now. And there's a technology gap today where company cannot needs to share this data, right? So if you, if you look at that process, you know, uh, like the supplier goes and submits a tons of data to first buyer and buyer verifies every, every, the supplier and onboard them, right? Then supplier goes submit maybe very similar set of data to buyer two. And he verifies the non bottom. Supplier goes and submit everything to buyer three, he verifies the non bottom. So as far as supplier is concerned, he is just repeating this whole thing, right? He 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 just just repeat the same data submitting there everywhere. So so we thought this is a very good opportunity to create a uh, trusted source of a supplier identity on a blockchain. So a supplier is a digital identity created on a blockchain and it can get shared with everybody. And once that happens, it's reduced the cost. And shorten the life cycle and they create a trust among the multiple buyers in the network. So, so when we had this idea, right? So this is the first learning. I'll come to the next slide as the next, I'll come to the next slide, then we come back. Okay, so now we'll go here. So this is the first learning we had. So when we had the idea, we had just a technology company. If you want to take this idea to the market, and we needed somebody very strong in supply chain in the procurement area. Not on the technology. Technology chain yet can develop it ours, but we needed somebody very strong person with a very strong uh, in a domain expertise. So we went to IBM procurement. We met this chief procurement officer of IBM. His name is Bob Murphy. Uh, so we went to him and uh, uh, so we presented this idea to him and he liked it. Uh, IBM had around, I think, you know, thousands of, I think more than 18,000 suppliers or something. Uh, and so they, they know the pain of uh, managing suppliers and onboarding suppliers and managing them. So IBM and Chania got into an agreement, um, created a partnership up there. So Chania will take care of the technology part and IBM will take care of the, uh, the domain expert plus the, the fundamental sales and, sales and all the aspects come from IBM, right? So, so that's the first lesson for, I have for everyone of you. First is, you need to build your team early and bring an industry leader of the domain as your partner, if you are a technology, especially if you are a technology company. If you are not a technology company, if you are a domain, if, if, you, are like, you, are, if you are like IBM procurement, then uh, I have a slide at the end for you. But uh, the, the first, first lesson is like, you need to build it, uh, team early and uh, please note that we have not even developed the solution before we got an agreement with IBM. So we did a very small POC and what IBM did is they brought in uh, another four or five members like Cisco came in, Danan Bratsic came in initially. So we made a team of you know, where, you know four to five, uh, uh, four to five members and started the, started the POC. So next thing we did is uh, so now we had the idea. So we have got onboarded a strong partner with us and IBM onboarded a few other people also along with that. So when we had that idea, so next thing we did is like we tried to see is blockchain is this actual solution for that. I mean, do we need a blockchain or can it be something else, right? So that we need to identify <clears throat> the data set that is being shared between suppliers to buyers. So if you look at, we found that, especially with the help of IBM because they are in this domain, we found that more than 50 percentage of the data set shared by supplier to is common with every buyer. So I, as a supplier, if I go to a buyer like IBM, buyer like Cisco, buyer like let's say Saudi Aramco, you know, my data set remains same. 50 percent of that data remain, remains same. 
and another 20 percent remain same if they are in the same industry let's say if they are if the two suppliers if they both are on the sorry two buyers if they they both are on the technology industry up to 70 to 70 percent of the data asked by these buyers to the suppliers are same and if they are the geography another 10 percent they would be remain same they both are from the us they both are from the middle east another 10 percent will be same <coughs> so and buyer to buyer specific information is only five percentage we found that some sometimes it was less than even five percentage so we found this is a good uh, candidate for blockchain because we have so much data that is common between buyer to buyer so if the supplier can create a digital identity and validate the data on a blockchain that can be cross utilized so so we uh, with, with that data we we went to the uh, why blockchain aspect you know see that you know blockchain will definitely bring in the trust there's validators can validate data that data can be cross utilized across other people and the, we get a trusted uh, single version of the truth which will save everybody's time so we decided you know this would be the blockchain solution so that's the second uh, uh, second lesson we have is blockchain is the right solution for you uh, the second aspect is you know more trust your supply how does it work right so we started doing a PO. We started doing a, you know, post that POC. We started doing the MVP aspect. So the way it works is, uh, and when the very first time, uh, let's say I am a supplier, and let's say buyer asked me to, uh, buyer asked me to uh, give data, uh, the supplier's data set. You know, for the first buyer, I give everything into the blockchain. For the first buyer, everything remains same. And what happens is like a very fair, like done on broadsheet or someone will come, whoever is signed up for, signed up with this buyer, he will come and verify all that data on the blockchain network. Right? And uh, this buyer get all this, all those verified data. So, so if, if it's a first buyer, first, first supplier is connected to first time buyer, then it takes uh, same 30 days, probably 30 days to three months or two months, right? There is no savings anybody gets. But what happens is like when the second buyer comes in, now this supplier has all this data verified by a verifier on the blockchain network. All he has to do is just share the data, whichever the data that is common between these buyers. He needs to re-verify only the data, which is you know, specific to that particular buyer. So let's say they, they both share like say 15% of the data, so like 75% of the data is common between these two buyers. Then that much data is already been verified. You can just share that. Then, so we, we get to multiple with where are very fair that there are certificate issues come in as very fair, like ISO organization, you know, auditors can come in there. So we also added a business network providers, like third party can take data from here with the permission of the supplier and buyer and provide uh, services on top of, top of this. Uh, there are the other third parties can, uh, you know, create app and uh, uh, softwares on top of this. You know, we did uh, many such things. So what we found was eventually, there's 90 percentage of the time, the major benefits to everybody is like real time updates happens. I'll tell you how it happens, a simple example. Let's say today in UAE, there's a one supplier is connected to 25 buyers. Today, supplier is a license, let's say get uh, expired. Today, what the supplier does is he goes to the government, uh, renew the license, take a copy of that and submits to all these 25 companies. And all these 25 buyers will send it to a verifier to verify that. That it's been verified, you know, it is being renewed, right? So in a blockchain network, he, all he has to do is he just uploads only one very one. He just uploads uh, the verified data on a blockchain, and one of the verifiers will probably come and verifies it, and a smart contract will uh, trigger an op auto update on a, uh, every buyer saying that this is being verified. So his, his license is renewed. So instead of twenty five. Uh, submissions there's only one submission see that's why is that in 90 percent of the time real time updates happen uh, second time onwards uh, 70 to 90 percent the reduction cycle time to onboard a uh, new sub a new uh, onboard a supplier with a new buyer and 50 plus percentage of a reduction in cost because of the onboarding time is uh, improved So, so, so if you come to the, um, if the next learning is, 
So what we found is this is actually a very critical learning for uh, every one of you if you are doing a blockchain. So we found that uh, it was very good. We limited the number of members. Uh, we limited the uh, number of members in the initial MVP. So we had only five or six members like an IBM was there, I think Cisco and uh, uh, Dan and Bradshaw, I think was there. <clears throat> there are only very limited number of people. I have seen uh, with some consortiums, I, I, I even spoke to a few people. There was a bank consortium, I think in uh, India or something, there were 60 members. Uh, the, the challenge was that uh, you can't get a consensus with the 60 members on your direction. How, how fast you want to go. Because if somebody will say that, let's do it in a, some other platform. Somebody will say that, let's do it in Ethereum platform. Somebody will say, let's do it in a fabric platform. Somebody will say, this is the first use case it has to be you know, something different. It's very difficult to get a consensus, the larger set of people. So, so you li limit the number of members, early members to you know, five, six, seven, you know, whichever comfortable for you. Uh, then if it is too small, let's say, you, let's say you are doing with only one player, right? Then it is very difficult for get a, and a convincing with a, when you try to go to market with the, with the rest of the members. So, so you, you know, which are, I'm not saying what is a magic number here, but you know, for case by case, uh, you can uh, decide that. So when you develop this MVP, the first few use cases, you have to ensure saying that it creates a business value to all stakeholders. You cannot create an MVP, uh, which says that, you know, only, you know, okay, first few use cases, only buyers get benefit. Supplies won't get benefit or very fast won't get benefit. It'll be very difficult for you to take it to the adoption. So we, we created in such a way that, you know, everybody gets a benefit out of the MVP. And, uh, you know, all the features get added, uh, added on top of that on a, on a base platform, which provides benefits to everybody. So what is the business value, right? You kind of saw that, but I, I'm just uh, going once again to, uh, I'm just repeating it once again. So it's fundamentally for a bias, we found that 90%, this is true for even a, a supplies also, 90% of them, 90% of the updates uh, happens uh, real time. Instead of the, the previous past, it was like manual updates. This was one of the major uh, outcome for, for bias. Bias found 70 to 90% reduction cycle time. Depends on how much, uh, uh, depends on how much uh, common information, uh, common information is there. And same thing for a uh, uh, very similar set for uh, supplies as well. And most of the supplies, su supplies loved the fact that they reduce the cost. Uh, they can, uh, uh, they can onboard with a new buyer within like, you know, two to five days or, you know, even smaller, less than that depends on how much common data is there. And because of that, they can start selling early. I mean, previously a supplier used to sell after six, you know, three months or something. Now I can start selling to my buyer, you know, the, the fifth day itself, you know, that will increase my, I get two and a half months of additional revenue coming up there. And we also ensured saying that uh, buyer, supplier, third party developers, you know, we opened up API for third party developers to create uh, new solutions on top of this. As an example, let's say credit risk or risk analysis, or maybe, you know, future we can do uh, open a, you know, you know, uh, you know, trading on this, you know, invoice discounting on this thing, right? Then auditing and compliance becomes very easy for auditors because with the blockchain network, we can do an auto audit. And verified, uh, uh, verified and certified issues are there. And Chania had become the owner and operator uh, because Chania had created the network. And uh, we created a, I'll, come, I'll cover some more details about this trusted angles and governance later. So, so this, this is the slide I want to spend a few minutes. So this is the current, uh, <clears throat> the current standing. Um, so, so on the governance board, uh, we have a large representation, right? So what we did is we created a governance board uh, uh, where, uh, you know, one, at least one company in, in all the major industries are becoming the governance board member. So, so being in the governance board, they get an additional revenue. A small percentage of the revenue is, I think, shared with them currently. And uh, the governance board members, uh, they don't pay joining the network today uh, as buyers. <clears throat> and we, uh, we met the toys already. So, so it's, it's basically the, the duty of the governance board is to decide the features and decide uh, 
uh, you know uh, the roadmap you know decide the interfaces for integrate and so they are the, the the they are the contributors you know well wishes of the network and we have validators like done and brought sheet echo what is rapid tracing and all those and these validators have validate the data submitted by suppliers and we have third party business network which integrates this one take data out of the blockchain network and they provide high value added services to the client and there's some other uh, uh, you know founding buyers uh, uh, already joined the network so the governance board is right now closed the new buyers come in join at the founding buyer okay so the other uh, uh, lessons are uh, so so you need to ensure saying that your business model is uh, uh, pretty strong to accept that stakeholder buy so the way we did this like we made it in such a way that you know the buyers uh, don't pay any fees to join the network and the validators uh, you know they get paid uh, when every time their data every time they validate their data and suppliers pay in our network suppliers pay money to join the network buyers don't pay so we on board uh, if you, if, you, if you look at here we we just uh, we just on board the buyers and verify it and business network and it is buyers responsibility to onboard the suppliers and that's the relationship between a uh, chain and the owner and operator of the network with the uh, with the buyers so the business model is in such a way that you know buyers get major benefits of uh, uh, joining the network because they don't even pay in, pay right now to join the network and the buyers uh, uh, onboard the suppliers and suppliers suppliers pay the network and suppliers because of the major advantage of uh, joining the network so they are also interested so the business model has to be thought through that the, for the reason i am saying this business model is critical is because uh, i have seen kyc and many other implementations where they don't know what is the business model to share uh, uh, share the revenue when let's say the kyc was verified by one company one bank and you know used by another bank and how do they acknowledge their the transaction right you know how will that the the new bank pay the old bank you know so such kind of a business model is actually the uh, the most interesting aspect of the blockchain and it'll create it will be the key success factor for uh, uh, success and the next one is like you have to create a decentralized governance model so so it's very similar to you saw our previous slide uh, we have so much uh, uh, people join on the governance board uh, with uh, everybody from uh, at least one major player from each industry so this would uh, the, the very good aspect of this is it's much easier for us to now go and uh, onboard a new buyers because the moment they see the previous slide with uh, such a wide adoption from everybody so people create a lot of trust in the network so so onboarding and go to market plan i kind of uh, uh, kind of mentioned it already i mean how do we do this today so uh, it's primarily these are the areas of the data uh, basically get verified you know financial side we take the bank verification billing competition labor cost contract you know strategic uh, uh, verification of the data and operational you know compliance like say the child labor is used or ethical practices are there you know health and safety so these are the data get verified and like i said the onboarding is primarily through buyers we don't go and the chain yard and don't go and onboard a suppliers into the network we onboard a, a buyers into the network because each buyers all the all the buyers now join most of them has more than 10000 suppliers in their network for i am 24 uh two dozen buyers in network so once they finish onboarding their suppliers you know it easily crosses the 200000 suppliers in network so instead of chain yard going and onboarding one by one supplier it's a much easier uh, way to onboard suppliers through buyers and chain yard onboard validators you so and chain yard onboard the third party network who like to associate with us to use the data from uh, this blockchain uh, cyas and present it to a Uh, as a new value added services to the buyers so we talked about the uh, decentralized governance model so the next one is your go to market strategy should be incentivize everybody like uh, today what we do is like uh, uh, the buyers get incent uh, buyers get uh, 
you know, uh, find this fee if let's say a buyer goes and they find another buyer into the network. So, so there's a percentage of revenue get shared with them. And uh, <clears throat> so even, so, so basically every aspect of the, when you create a blockchain network, you try to ensure saying that in every aspect of the uh, aspect is, you know, incentivized for everybody. Now, this is the last part, you know, it took us years, actually, it took us one to two years to get all the legal contracts in place. So, because if you think about uh, such a creating a, such a large consortium with uh, a lot of a lot of uh, players, you know, you're talking about every company's legal department is the reviewing every document. So it takes a lot of time to uh, finalize the legal challenges and you specifically, that is my next slide is actually specifically need a good uh, consultant who has taken uh, product into production, we can, uh, you know, guide you through the, uh, the consortium building and governance models. So, so on the future side, right? I mean, this is, uh, I'll just give you only one slide. Uh, so on the future side, so what we did is now we have a large supplier base on uh, uh, suppliers and buyers base in the network, right? So when the COVID happened, so there was a shortage of PPE, like this, uh, uh, all the mask and, you know, all, all PPE equipment. So immediately IBM came up with this idea of saying, you know, let's do a rapid supplier connect on top of trusted supplier where uh, you know connecting buyers and suppliers who who has a need and have right and you know, these this buyers are in need of looking for pp and suppliers have this much and they connected on top of blockchain network so we can ensure the quality and availability very quickly so we actually used the uh, two products in this one there's an ibm's product of uh, ibm sterling uh, availability was uh, listed on that and uh, they customers, the suppliers and buyers were verified on top of the blockchain network. The, the point I'm trying to say is uh, the, when people, there is a lot of article there in the web about uh, when COVID happens, uh, you, know, uh, you know, the blockchain is future because of COVID, right? I mean, when COVID such scenario happens, it to, blockchain help you only if you have a, a network which is already created, like, like this. So you can roll out a new solution on top of this network very quickly. If you don't have such a network, you start to create that because of this one, then it takes it takes years to create. I mean, we took all this almost this is I think two and a half, I mean, yeah, almost two years now. Close to two years now on I trust your supplier product. So and on top of this, you know, this this is just one solution. We are we are talking about many, many solutions. Uh, as an example, find a supplier, find a buyer, credit rating, you know, and so many solutions are being planned that can be rolled out on top of a, such a network. Uh, so that's, a, uh, that's the last one. Develop features, uh, actually, when you create a, a MVP, when you create a base product, you have to keep in mind, uh, you should be able to create uh, many features to grab the new economy, like the, like the rapid supplier connect, you know, very quickly we, uh, we, we just took only four weeks to create that, uh, um, that, that solution and uh, roll it on top of this. So we, we need to create the base in such a way, you know, or you should be able to probably tomorrow we might issue a token or tomorrow we might issue, you know, a uh, few new features on top of it. And last is, uh, let's say, let's assume you are not a technology company, right? Let's assume you are a, uh, you know, like like IBM procurement, you are a procurement organization or you are a supply chain company or, or you are a manufacturing company, right? In that case, you would definitely go with a, you need to engage a specialist. You, you cannot go with just a, uh, uh, just a blockchain uh, uh, development company. Or if you're going with a blockchain development company, I'll tell you why it is. You need to have a people with a, a special skills in a, a, specific areas in blockchain. Fundamentally, I mean, if you look at this, I mean, this is what typically an IT company does. Like they do the initial consulting services company, they do engineering and they will maintain it for you. But, but for us, for a uh, blockchain to be very successful, this piece comes in, the consortium aspect. You know, you need to know how to manage, how to create and how to manage a consortium. And the way that this is, not linear. I mean, we, we don't do consulting and complete the requirement. Then we go to engineering, don't go to operation. What we do is like we do initial consulting, 
do an MVP aspect, you know, getting the consortium built, you know, take the consortium people's input into the consulting, then refine that, you know, do an MVP, then move the MVP, get the next, next right set of people in the consortium, you know, refine the solution. So it's an iterative process. And why consortium is very critical is my next slide, right? I mean, there are basically two aspects of consortium. First is a business consideration. As an example, what is the governance and who pays who? You know, what is the workflow? Who will operate the network? You know, how is cost managed? What benefits everybody get, right? How, you know, how do you split the revenue? So what is the business model? All those come in business consideration. On the technology side, right? How do you add a member? How do you remove a member, right? And what if somebody does something wrong? What is the governance structure? Who owns the data? Who is the chief data officer, right? Who operates the network? Who manages the network? Who ensures saying that uh, uh, when an upgrade happens, all the smart contracts are intact, intact, right? I mean, all those hundreds of questions will come here. And Chainyard has uh, successfully created a consortium uh, building uh, uh, consulting engagement because we took four products into the production already. And we have a very uh, good framework for this. And mostly, uh, this primarily our experience came from uh, building the consortium of trust your supplier. I think that's all I have for you. Uh, I mean, I think I went, uh, it's, yeah, it's 40 minutes already, including the initial introductions we had. And I'll stop at this point. Uh, I don't know, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, you know, we have another 10, 15 minutes. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, your presentation. Uh, yes, uh, anybody has a question, he or uh, she can unmute and uh, ask directly. Hi. Mm -hmm. Hello. This is Alam Daddy. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, I just want to check how is the validation taking place in the blockchain? Maybe I missed it. If you can just highlight, how is the validation taking place on the blockchain? Uh, sure, sure. So the validation happens. Let's say supplier uh, submit the. Uh, let me let me take that slide uh, once again. Uh, let's say the supplier submit the supplier's data on a blockchain network, right? So once this uh, data is submitted, uh, let's go back here. This one. So once the data is submitted by the supplier. So the way it works is like buyer invites a supplier, okay? Supplier cannot join the blockchain network themselves. A buyer has to invite the supplier. The buyer invites supplier, the buyer send all these data set to supplier. And the questions to supplier. All these questions, the buyer answers and submit in the blockchain network. And very fair, let's say, done and brought it is very fair, right? For some questions, for some other questions, uh, Today we have this many very fair, right? We have Dunan Braxi there, Akawadis, you know, there are at least another uh, another two dozens or dozen people are, you know, adding their, uh, getting connected in the network. So these people, uh, based on the set of questions, like say maybe financials or company data, Dunan Braxi will verify on a blockchain network. And the rest of things may be Akawadis, some of them may be rapid rating will verify. So they verify it's on a blockchain network and it happens in such, such a way that that verification can be seen only by that specific buyer. When this second buyer comes in and second buyer, buyer invites the supplier to join here, then the supplier gives his right to the second buyer to see the verified data. Yeah. Have a, yeah, thank you. Uh, clear. The answer? Yes, yes. Uh, just to check, can the can this be a private blockchain or should be public blockchain? Or this, this is a private blockchain. blockchain. This, this is a private blockchain. We use Hyperledger. So it, could, it could be used for for a certain group itself with their with own suppliers. Exactly. Yeah. This is this is used there already. I mean, you saw this uh, slide twenty one, right? These are the buyers already in the network. There's a large set of buyers. So all these buyers, okay. suppliers are being onboarded into the network right now. Okay. Thousands of Thank buyers, you. thousands of suppliers are already in the network now. Okay. Okay. As you said that you have developed uh, this project using Hyperledger Fabric. As it is the identity of the supplier, so why not 
hyperledger indie is there any it means suppose it is specifically for the uh, for identity of the supplier so means uh, i just want to know that uh, why hyperledger fabric why not hyperledger indie i mean so we started this uh, we, mm -hmm. we started this two years back right so at that time indie was not there i believe mm -hmm. so when we started right indie was a uh, you no know, probably year year and a half year and a half before indie was there Right, indie came. I mean, I think we we didn't uh, we didn't look at that at all. And uh, 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 I mean, I don't know. Now we uh, now we are so much into the into this one, right? I mean, so yeah. So mm. probably had that been digital digital wallet kind of a scenario, probably indie could have been a more uh, more good solution. But I'm not a techie guy to answer exactly give you the okay. very specific answer, but. By Billy, at that time we started, it was only fabric. Yeah. Another question. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, you can continue then. Oh, hello. Hi, uh, Satish here. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, first is, uh, you mentioned that the governance team uh, gets money. Right? Yeah, I mean, uh, gets uh, uh, financial benefits uh, when the supplies are getting added. So, uh, how is is it so that the supplier, uh, when they uh, again, when they are joining the network, they need to pay some money uh, to the governance team as a whole? Like, no, no. Suppliers pay to the network, okay. right? I mean, that is the business model we created. I mean, it's up to you. When you have a, you know, when you create a network, you know, you can have either both buyers and suppliers pay the network, right? So in our yep. case, we decided that you know suppliers may pay and buyers don't pay now. And it may change. Maybe like two years down the line, the owner and operator of the network may change. We don't know. But today, okay. uh, today it's only suppliers pay, and a small percentage of that is uh, as an incentive is given to the governance board members. The network pays. Okay, so it's like uh, first year, uh, first year uh, of the joining, uh, the supplier will be paying an annual fee and. Uh, Onboarding fee every, like, every year, every year they pay annual fee, right? Yeah. Depends yeah. on which plan they have. There are multiple plans available. Okay. And suppliers today don't pay when they, so suppliers start paying only when they have the second buyer. The first buyer they don't pay today. So okay. that's another benefit we give them because because if you look at you know supplier is connected only one buyer, the supplier doesn't yeah. get any benefit. The buyer doesn't get any benefit, right? And the benefit yeah. comes in when the second network effect comes in, right? The second buyer comes in, he gets benefit supply. So, so his uh, payment start when the second buyer comes in. Okay, so until then, the supplier doesn't need to pay annual fee or uh, onboarding fee. No, no, okay. he is not getting any benefit. I mean, that's a business model. We 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 thought it is beneficial for everybody. Okay, okay. And the second question is like. Uh, the verifiers, there are multiple verifiers available in the network. So when a new supplier joins the network, so how the uh, verifier is selected, like uh, which verifier will be uh, validating the data of the supplier? If you look at uh, today's world, right, you know, when a supplier submits the data to a buyer, it is buyer uses some verifiers to verify the data, right? Supplier wouldn't even know that. So it is not the supplier's responsibility, right? It is buyer select uh, whoever he has license with, right? Maybe this particular buyer is with uh, you know, um, Dun and Batshit, or maybe he is with some other chartered account. He uses whoever. It is buyer's decision, right? To verify the data. Yeah. And and the other buyer also should be using the same verifier. Then only he can get the network benefit. Okay. Fine, fine. Thank you very much. Yes. Anyone else have any questions? So the, the critical aspect of this is is your business model. I mean, that is the learning. I mean, I wanted to stress back instead of explaining the product, right? I want to stress back say is blockchain is more about the business model you create. It is, it is technology is there, but the good business model is the critical aspect. And many people miss that. You know, people start doing a POC just like that, and they don't even think about what is the business model. How do you going to monetize the network, right? Uh, what is the hi again? This is Alam Khidadi again. Uh, what is the budget, budget for uh, making a POC initial budget? How much we should budget for that? 
it depends on how much uh, use cases uh, uh, use cases you have right so i mean it is it is a you know uh, this pricing and all it is not a good uh, advice to discuss on a public uh, meeting but uh, uh, yeah I mean, i understand you can send me a mail and i can share you you know some of uh, some suggestions actually or i'll do that, that. thank you yeah no you problem. have my email address right i uh, i will check it from that from the uh, slide are you going to share the slide or no let me let me just uh, uh, type it here yeah so 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 some uh, depends on how, how many use cases how complex use cases how simple it is uh, you know but but my if you listen to my presentation right i mean before we do a poc you know you ensure saying that you get a good set of people with you right you have a yeah. leader take this solution out and all those things right yeah i'll drop you a mail no problem yeah. uh, see and the representative in your ae pardon i i didn't hear you he is india based i think he is asking uh, you are you ai based uh, uh, yeah yeah no, no. My, I, i thought someone i thought someone is asking question so i kept quiet uh, are you a uae based uh, company or uh, india no, based we, company we we are a us based company us do you have a representative here or how you so we work with uh, uh, with the uh, uh, on the services side on the no, not on this product side on the services side uh, we work with a uh, a system integrator we are doing a one project for a us sorry the dubai government also so for that uh, we work with through uh, uh, one of the you know uh, uh, you know system integrators there in the ua so on the services side yes but uh, yeah i mean it, it's again like you know the chain ad is a one of the certified uh, uh service provided by hyperlink yeah? so we do get a queries to work with clients and this could be integrated with our erp system through an api e exactly so if you if you look at uh, i'll me share you that slide once again because it is critical if you look at uh, these guys right these yeah. guys are the these guys are the very face on the right side these these are people do the data provider very fair and if you look at Correct. these people sap is already integrated with us IBM okay. Sterling, you know, we did it for uh, uh, this uh, Rapid Supplier Connect, right? I mean, these these companies uh, they integrate, and if you have an ERP, you can come and integrate. You know, come here, have a partner with us. You know, put uh, your ERP Great. integrate. Us. Take data from this. You know, depends on the. You can take only the data which your company has access to, or company has Correct. right to, right? For using the ERP, then yeah, yeah. provide Thank a you. high value added, a high value added, a, you know, third party services to your company, or maybe you can do it any company, right? Right. Thank you very much. Adding, adding uh, IBM are uh, big giants uh, in the in the with the network. So normally the option means mostly companies think, especially the SMEs, that uh, it becomes more costly the system. So how 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 you means uh, how you you will respond on that uh, basically, and how important for any company to have a, like you said that you must have is it important for every project to have a big giant to go into the market no the no no need not be i said uh, you have to have somebody in that domain if you are a technology company see if you if you are a, if you look at my share, slide right if you are a technology company you definitely need a, you know somebody in the domain expert expertise to take you around right as an example let's say let's say you are doing something the logistic and if you are a technology startup if you do in the logistics who is going to help you with uh, selling in the logistics area right getting everybody in okay that's it so so for we when we thought about so now we thought ibm procurement is right team and we went with them we got uh, you know good relationship with them and seems to be seem to be working i mean if you are let's say logistics so if you are let's say transportation Uh, you know you find somebody in transportation if you are technology company but if you are already a transportation company or if you are logistics company then they have to find a good technology company who can do this thing for you and that is why i said last slide i said you know somebody who has taken multiple solution to production somebody knows the expertise of uh, uh, the uh, governance building and and consortium building is has to be the team 
if you anyone else any question uh hi satish again um, actually one question about the uh, uh, solutions provided by the companies like uh, so for example in this case all the companies are being uh, uh, you know in the network or kind of as uh, mul said uh, they are big names so is it like uh, say when we say uh, blockchain is uh, you know being uh, considered as a disruptive technology it has a huge potential uh, so as the soci say for example uh, the soci networking also um, for example facebook has transformed uh, at many levels of our lives so but uh, the number of social networking companies out there are very very limited the successful uh, companies like facebook twitter so in blockchain space uh, even though the uh, disruptive potential is huge so will it be like only a few number of players will be out there to you know provide the solutions or is it like uh, multiple players will even uh, small scale uh, companies also be part of it and uh, Uh, provide general purpose solutions i mean the similar solutions yeah, so there will be, um, see we don't know how it which way it will go but uh, uh, but my understanding is there is already internet networking uh, like you know uh, already a lot of hoy started between uh, integrating multiple blockchain networks you now multiple blockchain networks interacting each other kind of scenario so if that becomes successful there will be like you know multiple many providers for the same thing then they all integrate and talk to each other is an example let's say but i am I'm not expecting so many of them because a supplier in this particular scenario as an example right it yeah. every supplier is to create file in multiple so many because i have one buyer in one network another buyer in another network another buyer in another network right then that benefits won't come in right yep so there will be some kind of consolidation but there will be like that's what i am expecting i mean it's a it's a you are asking my opinion right so you don't know how yes, things yes. will go but but once all these people started all this network started uh, talking to each other there can be possibility of multiple okay thank you i think more i think we are done i think you know we can uh, wind up i really uh, appreciate uh, uh, thank you very much for your time uh, Uh, thank you it was uh, it was, it was well, i hope it was very fruitful for all of the participants uh, thank you uh, all of you for joining us and uh, see you in next uh, session have a good day and sure take care. sure thank i do you. i used to come very frequently to i used to come very frequently to uae i have taken many sessions in uh, university of dubai i took a session uh, then uh, dubai itself i took uh, two three sessions last time I we will be there for the future blockchain summit. We will have both. No, please in come October, over at that time. Right, end of October. Uh, in October, right? Yeah, it was supposed to be in a March, and uh, that's where the whole COVID happened. April yeah. first week, COVID happened, and got slowed down. So, um, so, we so, hope, uh, so things we will be. Uh, we hope things will be on normal soon, and see you soon in the way. Maybe. Bye. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank Everybody you. stay Thank safe. You. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you everyone. Will this presentation be shared or?